All right, everyone, and welcome back to AI Geek. I'm Noah Carter. And I'm Layla Mitchell. Today, we're diving into something that's been quietly revolutionizing AI image editing, Flux Context from Black Forest Labs. Wait, hold up. Before we jump in, Lila, can you explain why this is such a big deal? I mean, we've got mid-journey, stable diffusion. What makes this different? Great question. So here's the thing. All those models you mentioned are fantastic at generating images from scratch. But Flux Context is what we call a multimodal diffusion transformer. It's designed specifically for precise editing while maintaining what they call pixel level consistency. Pixel level consistency? Break that down for me. Think of it this way. When you edit an image in Photoshop, you select specific pixels and change only those pixels, right? Traditional AI models tend to regenerate the entire image based on your prompt. Flux Context works more like intelligent masking. It identifies what needs to change and leaves everything else untouched. Oh, so it's like having an AI that understands object permanence in images? Exactly, and that's powered by their 12 billion parameter architecture. But here's where it gets really interesting. They've achieved this in about 10 to 15 seconds per generation compared to GPT-4's one to two minutes. Let's see this in action. We'll start with something that really shows off the precision. Photo restoration. Here's our original old test image. Now, traditional AI might just generate a Venice-like image, but watch what happens when I prompt. Restore this photograph, add realistic color, and make it look like it was taken with a modern camera. Check out the processed version. But here's what's fascinating. Notice how it didn't just colorize randomly? The water has that specific Venetian canal green. The buildings have appropriate Mediterranean tones. Let me explain what's happening under the hood. The model is analyzing the structural elements, the buildings, the boat, the water patterns, and it's essentially filling in missing data based on its training. Right. It's using contextual understanding. The model knows this is Venice, so it applies historically and geographically appropriate colors. But here's where we need to talk about a key limitation. The iterative degradation problem. Exactly. Each time you edit an already edited image, you lose quality. Black Forest Labs mentions this in their technical documentation. After any iterations, you start seeing what we call deep frying, artifacts, and quality loss. So the best practice is always going back to your source image for major changes or use AI upscalers. Let me demonstrate by adding to our restored Venice photo, add a grand palace to the left and richly dressed people in the right. See how it seamlessly integrated new elements? But if I kept editing this version, we'd start losing clarity. It's a trade-off between workflow speed and quality preservation. Now let's tackle the holy grail of AI image editing, character consistency. This is where Flux Context really shines compared to other models. Here's my source image. Now when I prompt for a scene change, I need to be very specific about identifying features. Watch this. Change the setting to a bustling outdoor market in Morocco. The man is standing and there's a monkey on the floor. But wait, why did I phrase it that way instead of just saying, put me in Morocco? Ah, this is crucial for Flux Context. The model needs anchor points, identifying features to maintain consistency by saying the man you're telling it to preserve that specific person's characteristics. Perfect facial consistency. Now, here's where it gets interesting from a technical standpoint. Let's test Poe's direction. Change his pose so he is crouching. That's remarkable. It understood the spatial relationship between you and the monkey, maintained the market environment, and only changed your pose. Most models would regenerate the entire scene. Now for comparison, I ran the same prompts through Google's Gemini 2.0 Image AI. Let me show you the difference. Oh wow, the face is completely different, the quality is lower, and it feels more like a recreation than an edit. Why do you think that happens? It's about the underlying architecture. Google does have a reference-aware model as we can see, but right now it's the speed demo rather than the quality flagship. It's worth noting that Google has other high-quality models, like Imogen 3 and 4, but they don't include reference awareness capabilities. Let's push this further with multiple characters. This is where most models completely fall apart. Our test prompt for both Flux and ChatGPT. The two of them are driving go-karts on a racetrack. Now maintaining two distinct characters with their specific features is exponentially harder than one. Flux first. Notice how it kept our exact outfits. That's the pixel level consistency at work. Now ChatGPT's version. Interesting. ChatGPT went more stylized. But here's the technical insight. ChatGPT is using an autoregressive approach, generating the image token by token. That gives it more creative freedom, but less precise control. 
So it's a fundamental trade-off in the model design. Flux prioritizes accuracy. ChatGPT prioritizes interpretation. Exactly. Now let's explore the model's limits with rapid transformations. These are one-shot edits from source images. Simple wardrobe change first. Change her outfit to a red jacket. Let's see. Good, but basic. Now something more complex. Change her outfit to a beautiful wedding dress. Look at that. Notice how it's not just swapping clothes. It's understanding context. The wedding dress comes with appropriate lighting and subtle posture adjustments. That's multimodal understanding at work. And here's my transformation. Transform the man into a king. One prompt, complete change, while maintaining identity. But what happens when we try to combine these edited versions? This is where that degradation issue becomes critical. Right. When we prompted both models with the Noah and Lila are in a grand palace, dressed as a king and queen, we're working with already processed images. Let's see the results. Flux managed to maintain our faces throughout the iteration, though it preserved your features better than mine. Now, let's see what ChatGPT can do. ChatGPT went for a fully artistic interpretation where likeness is even less accurate. We're basically different people at this point, but that more cartoon-like quality might be exactly what some users want. Now let's talk about practical applications. Style transfer is huge for content creators. Using Van Gogh's Starry Night as a style reference with the prompt, transfer the style of the Starry Night painting onto the portrait of the woman. That's not just a filter. Look at how it understood the brushwork, the color theory, the emotional movement of Van Gogh's style. This is leveraging something similar to neural style transfer, but with much more semantic understanding. It knows which elements to stylize and which to preserve for recognition. Let's test text manipulation. Another traditionally difficult task. Prompt, change the text on the street sign to AI geek. Perfect legibility. That's because Flux Context has specific training for text coherence. It's not just generating pixel patterns that look like text. Finally, let's test product placement, a real world use case. Same prompt for both models. Place this logo on a black t-shirt that the man is wearing. Flux gives us precise placement, but notice it sometimes struggles with scale. The logo might be too large. That's a known limitation in their current model. So, let's synthesize what we've learned. Flux context, excels at surgical edits, character consistency, and rapid generation. The trade-offs, the output resolution from Flux context is low by today's standards, certainly lower than ChatGPT's image output. This can be solved easily with an image scaler like Gigapixel from Topaz or FreePick with the imagination settings set to minimum to avoid changing the likeness. It's something we did in several of our examples. For workflows, this means always keep your source images, plan your edit sequence to minimize iterations, and use specific identifying language in your prompts. It's particularly powerful for storyboarding, product mockups, and any scenario where identity preservation is crucial. And here's the exciting part. With the dev version coming as open source, we'll see community fine tunes for specific use cases. Imagine versions optimized for fashion, architecture, or character animation. The technical foundation is solid. 12 billion parameters, 10 second generation time, true multimodal understanding. But he's like, this isn't just an incremental improvement. It's a new paradigm for how we think about AI image editing. We want to hear from you. What technical aspects would you like us to explore deeper? Are you more interested in the model architecture, practical workflows, or comparison benchmarks? Let us know in the comments. And remember, the best way to understand these tools is to experiment. Start with simple edits, build up to complex scenes, and always keep your source files. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Flux Context. Until next time, keep questioning, keep creating.